Hi there, this is Dana. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to stitch over one on linen and even weave. Now, uh, in a previous tutorial, I taught how to stitch over one versus over two. Uh, for example, like stitching over one on Ada fabric versus stitching over two on linen and even weave to get the same size stitch. This one, I'm going to be teaching how to do over one on linen and even weave. It's a little different than stitching over one on Ada. And the reason is, you can see Ada is made up of these blocks, like they're basically a bunch of strands running one way and a bunch of strands running another way and they've kind of all been clustered together and then they have little holes in the corners where the, each section meets and that's where you put your stitches. Um, but the issue is with Ada, you can see just the way that these run, it's a really tight weave. However, with linen and even weave, little fluffy off there. Because of the way it's manufactured, the threads go up and over each other like this. And because of that, if you do over one stitching the same way you would attack it as on Ada fabric, where the weave is a lot tighter, your stitches can actually sometimes slide underneath the threads. Like say if your warp fabric, or so your weft fabric, which is left to right, your horizontal fabric, depending on how you work your stitches, they can actually slide underneath those strands and end up sort of all squishing together and not holding their shape, which is really frustrating, especially if you've never worked with linen or um, uh, even weave and doing over one and and you're just like, why is this not working? Like, I'm like, am I defective? <laughs> like, what's wrong with me? Why is this not working when it works so well? And obviously I know how to stitch on Ada. So that's why I'm going to teach you how to do this. The reason you're sometimes going to want to stitch over one on linen and even weave is um, either you want a smaller uh, finished product. Uh, if you stitch over two, obviously it's going to be twice the size as if you stitch over one. Or if you're working on a massive pattern, some of them are so big that you have to stitch over one because the finished size would be bigger than you can buy fabric for basically. So that's why you sometimes do have to stitch over one. And some people do like the, the look of over one as well. It's really beautiful. Like it's um basically petite point. Uh, so that was really popular in the in the day back in the day and all that. And some people really like that sort of beautiful vintage look of having like really tiny, tiny little stitches. So what I'm gonna do, this might be a little bit tricky to to show you. There's two different ways to do this for um for linen and even weave to stitch over one. One, you can do what's called the English method in cross stitch, which is forming each stitch individually at a time. So you do one stitch, move on to the next, do one stitch, move to the next. Another uh, method in cross stitch is called a Danish stitch, which is um, basically where you kind of do half your stitch one way and then you come back and you finish the other arm of the X. So I'm going to show you both methods. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to quite see the detail in this, but I'm going to explain it to you so that you can actually look um, yourself on your fabric, even if you can't fully see the exact detail in this because it is so small. But I will explain everything to you. So what you're going to be wanting to do, like say you're wanting to start stitching, is you're going to want to look at your your horizontal fabric, or sorry, horizontal thread that goes across right underneath or I should say right above where you're going to do your X. Like the horizontal thread that you're going to be catching under your stitch. Look at that. Right now, I'm, not, I, I'm pretty sure you probably can't see this, but right now the horizontal thread is underneath the warp thread, the vertical one. It's going underneath of it. So in this case, what you're going to be doing to, so that your stitch doesn't pop out and doesn't slide is you're going to go from the lower left up to the top right to make the first arm of your stitch. So lower left to top right. So it's going to be the same for both of these versions. So it's always lower left to top right. And then you're going to be wanting to come underneath. So you're going to come to the lower right and go up to your upper left. All right. So if you're if your weft thread, your horizontal thread, is going underneath your vertical thread, you're going to do your bottom left to top right, and then come straight down to do the other arm. So you're going to go top from your top right, you're going to come under the fabric, come up at your bottom right, 
and go to top left. I know, it's crazy. Then for the next one, you're actually going to do the opposite. You're going to come again, you're going to come up. Your bottom left, go down your top right. So that first arm is always going to be the same. And then because your horizontal fabric is now over your vertical one, because it goes under, over, under, over every, every stitch, you're going to come down, you're going to come back up the top left and go down the bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this on the Ada as if it was even weave just so you can see in a little bit more detail. So let's pretend this is even weave and linen. And let's pretend that this horizontal thread here, right here, let's pretend that that horizontal thread, well, let's just sort of look at it. I mean, it kind of is right now. The horizontal thread is underneath this top bar of, of the vertical thread. But with Ada, because it's so tight, it doesn't really matter with Ada that you um, have to do this. With linen and even weave, it does matter because the threads are much more pliable and can slide against each other. All right, so again, bottom left to top right. And then you're going to go straight down. Bottom right to top left. So that's assuming that your horizontal thread is going under your vertical thread. For the next one, same again, you're going to go bottom left to top right, and then you're going to come the other way. So this is when your horizontal fabric or horizontal thread is over top of your vertical one. Top left to bottom right. So by repeating that pattern, so you can see you're going back and forth between which direction you're coming from for your final stitch, whether you're coming from the bottom and going up or whether you're coming from the top and going down. So that prevents your stitches from popping out and sliding. So that's one way to do it. The uh, problem, I'll say problem, it's not really a problem. The problem with doing this this way, doing the English method, doing each stitch individually, is it can be quite tricky to especially with really fine fabric and depending on how good your eyesight is like I would definitely recommend either reading glasses even if your eyes are fine because it'll help magnify the fabric just a tiny little bit um, obviously be careful about wearing them too much and hurting your eyes um, or you can um, get one of those like magnifier lights and then you put your stitching under it and you can actually see really clearly it can be tricky to sometimes see which fabric is going over which like whether your threads are going under or over so that can be tricky So I'm going to show you another way to do it. So this is like the, the Danish style version where you're doing half of one of your stitches and then half the other. So I'll show you on the even weave first and I'll show you again on the Ada just so you get the idea. So again, you're going to be starting with your bottom bar. So your bottom bar stitch is always going to go bottom left to top right. So that's easy. Both of these methods, bottom left to top right. Just remember that. And if you're left and right challenged like me, this might be interesting. And then we're going to basically be doing what's called a continental tent stitch. So this is what's used in needlework a lot, in needlepoint. Um, so you've gone up the bottom left, down the top right. You're going to come up again, bottom left, and you're moving from right to left. I know this is going to feel really counterintuitive, and you're going to be going, oh, but all the floss is being wasted. It's fine. So you're actually moving left to right, doing the exact same thing. Bottom left to top right. You have to move right to left, otherwise your stitches will pop out. This helps lock them in place. Alright, so you do your series like that. 
And then when you're finished your section, then you come back and cross them as you would normally. Just a bit. And you can see I'm going from top to bottom when I'm coming back. of stitches amazing so I'm gonna cut this and show you again on the Ada just so you can see it in more detail tiny short little piece of thread but that's fine it's enough to demonstrate with all right so again you're gonna start bottom left top right bottom left top right working right to left let's do one more Just like that and then you're going to come back so if you do like a challenge then Stitching over one on linen and even weave can be actually really, really fun because, like, the, the finished product, because the finished product ends up so much smaller, it can be really, really beautiful to look at, especially like if you're putting it into a fair or something like that and you're going to get a lot of people looking at it in person. They're going to be like, whoa, like in, um, like in photographs, it doesn't come across as well just because you can't see the scale, but in person, if you, it, over one looks amazing. So, there you go. Ta da! Magic! So if you have any questions or comments, please do feel free to let me know in the comments below. And I hope you've learned something, and I hope you have a great day. Bye for now!